If you're a middle-aged American, some of us are, you can probably still dimly remember back to what things used to be like in this country, say, 13 or 14 months ago. Way back then, before the revolution, pretty much everybody agreed that segregation was the worst thing this country ever did. Forcing certain categories of citizens into separate, lesser accommodations, barring them from public places, treating them like lepers or untouchables, that was completely immoral and wrong. We were told that a lot, and most of us strongly agreed. It was wrong. So imagine our confusion today looking out across the country. The very same people, literally the very same, who just the other day told us that segregation was immoral, are now enforcing segregation. Should we be surprised? Probably not, but we still are. Just this morning, the New York Times informed us that unless you can prove you have taken the injection that the Democratic Party demands you take, you are no longer permitted in bars, comedy clubs, even some dance competitions in the state of New York. You're too dirty to appear in public. You're not welcome near normal people. Want to watch the NBA playoffs in person? You had better be vaccinated to do that. Otherwise, the New York Knicks will bar you from Madison Square Garden. You can still go see a baseball game if you want to, but be warned, you will be sitting in your own roped off section, marinating in your shame with the other disobedient bad people. Medical Jim Crow has come to America. If we still had water fountains, the unvaccinated would have separate ones. But wait, you ask, is this logical? Does it make sense? Why would people who've had the vaccine fear being near people who haven't had the vaccine? Aren't the vaccinated protected? Isn't that the whole point of getting the shot? Sure, well, maybe from a health perspective, that is technically true if you want to be precise about it, but it's clearly not about health or science. It's bigger than that. It's about good and evil. It's about discovering who is a decent person and who, by contrast, deserves to be punished for sin. It's about finding out who has obeyed. And thankfully, once again, technology is coming to the rescue. Watch. It's called the Immuniband. The Denver physician says it's the first of its kind on the market. It costs $19.99, and it's simple to use. After buying it, you send a copy of your vaccination card, and they'll load it to their encrypted server. If someone wants to verify your vaccine record, all they got to do is take a picture of the QR code on their phone, and it'll take them to that website. It's easy. It's got a QR code. You just send a copy of your vaccination card. Just show your papers, and then you can participate in the life of your country. In New York, the state is doing this by itself. It's issuing something called the Excelsior Pass. The Excelsior Pass entitles you to all the rights and freedoms you imagined you were born with, but that turn out to be entirely contingent on whether you do exactly what Andrew Cuomo says to do immediately. Officials in New York have assured us the Excelsior Pass is totally safe. It's every bit as safe as a state-licensed nursing home. And it's utterly confidential. It's a lockbox. Your personal health information cannot be hacked by anyone. Apart, of course, from hackers, people who actually try to hack it. Last month, for example, a man called Albert Fox Kahn broke into the Excelsior Pass in just 11 minutes. But other than that, you're completely fine. So more than a million people have downloaded the Excelsior Pass so far, and that's a victory for public health. But it does make you wonder... Is this the end or is it the beginning? Why should it end here? The coronavirus is transmissible and it can be dangerous, but it's hardly the only illness that fits that description. There are many. So if politicians can segregate potential COVID carriers from the rest of the American population, why can't they do the same thing to people with HIV or tuberculosis or hepatitis C? Before you laugh off the possibility of that happening, see if you can answer the core question. Why wouldn't that happen? And of course, at this point, there really isn't a reason that it wouldn't happen because the precedent has been set. And by the way, say goodbye to those HIPAA protections you thought you had. It used to be illegal to demand people's confidential medical information. Not anymore. What's illegal now is trying to hide it. The FBI is warning of, quote, severe penalties for anyone who dares to forge a vaccine card. So don't even think about it. Now, we used to spend quite a bit of time worrying about scenarios like the one we're living through right now. Back in 2003, for example, a federal judge in Washington ruled that the government cannot force an unapproved vaccine on its citizens. At the time, the Defense Department wanted to inoculate soldiers serving in Iraq against anthrax. Some soldiers didn't want it. DOD tried to make them take it. And then the judge, Emmett Sullivan, stepped in. He said this, quote, 
absent an informed consent or presidential waiver, the United States cannot demand that members of the armed forces serve as guinea pigs for experimental drugs, end quote. He was not attacked for that. In fact, at the time, Judge Sullivan's ruling was seen as a victory for civil liberties. How would it be seen now? Well, it would be seen, in fact, it would be denounced as a win for QAnon. Because make no mistake, the only people who have not been vaccinated at this point are Trump voters and other dangerous white supremacists. Because they're the only ones evil enough to threaten this nation's public health. We've learned that repeatedly on television. Here's an example. And now, the narrative has entirely changed, and it's about Republicans, mostly men, so white male Republicans, right. who don't want to get the shot. Brian, there is no group in America more likely to say, no, I am not going to get the COVID vaccine than white Republican men. Why don't they want it, these white men who, by and large, were Trumpers? There is the kind of, you know, Republican white men who seem to take pride in it uh, about refusing this vaccine. It's also dangerous. I mean, we know that the vaccine hesitancy rates are rising amongst white Republican men. Th there actually is very little vaccine hesitancy at the moment between African-Americans and, and um, Latino communities. Yeah, you're not surprised. It's always the same people, isn't it? Those white Republican men. The very ones that just today Joe Biden warned us are more dangerous than ISIS. These are the people who've been beating up elderly Asian women in our cities. You've seen that plague unfold. These are the ones who don't believe in science, who have no decency. They're the problem. Just the other day, Joe Biden's grumpy little flack told us that she had found new ways to reach these recalcitrant mouth breathers. We've run PSAs on the deadliest catch. We're engaged with NASCAR and country music TV. We're looking for a range of creative ways to get directly connected to white conservative communities. <laughs> it's the white men again, but not just any white men. It's the one who likes country music and NASCAR, not the ones who go to Aspen. The white Republican men are dangerous and they can sit at the back of the bus. In fact, they can walk. They shouldn't even be allowed in public buildings. That's a story you keep hearing. You just heard it in very clear terms. No group in America is more likely to turn down the vaccine than, quote, white Republican men. We've heard that so many times that just the other day we decided to check the number because not all the numbers you hear, even from the podium at the White House, are true. So here are the real numbers as collected by the U.S. government. Well, look at that. It turns out, and we know you're shocked, they're lying again. In fact, what they're saying is the opposite of the truth. As of two weeks ago, 50% of Asian Americans had been vaccinated against COVID. That number among white Americans was about 40%. Among African Americans, it was 27%. Among Hispanics, it was 29%. So this has implications. If we're gonna make the quote, unvaccinated sit in their own unfashionable little section at MLB games, that's going to make for some pretty embarrassing photographs sometime soon, because it seems like the new segregation looks a lot like the old segregation. And we wonder how they're going to explain that. Can't wait to hear it. In the meantime, we're happy to be joined for an assessment of all of this by our friend Candace Owens. Candace, great to see you. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I'm sorry to laugh. It's a, it's a serious subject. I think there are all kinds of important implications for civil liberties going forward, as noted. But once you check their numbers on almost any claim, it turns out not simply to be off by a standard deviation, but it's like the inverse of the reality every time. You're absolutely right. And I'm so glad that you're talking about medical segregation because there's something really important that I want to say. So often hindsight is 2020. You look back and you say, I don't understand how people living at that time allowed these atrocities to take place. I don't understand yeah. how people living during the time of Jim Crow allowed these atrocities to take place based off of the people, the color of people's skin. Well, Tucker, we're living in those times right now. People don't actually recognize that. We are living right now in a time where you have an entire ecosystem of people that are telling you discrimination is okay. And by the way, it's always the same characters that force this discrimination. It's always the government that say it's okay. It's always the media that says it's okay. The media is making fun and saying, you know what, this is fine. This is, this is an acceptable kind of discrimination. It was the same during the era of Jim Crow. 
Most people don't know this, but the New York Times, for example, back in the day when the New York Times was printing articles talking about the Ku Klux Klan, they referred to them as amiable. The friendly Ku Klux Klan met again at this event. They made it seem as though there was something fundamentally wrong with black Americans. They were dumber. They were dirtier. They deserved this treatment. This is exactly what they're doing again years later. They're reintroducing the same type of propaganda to convince people that this form of discrimination, it's actually okay. You need this. It's for your safety. It's always for your safety. And they do this across many other societies. They've done this always. And right now, the Democrats are at the helm. Jen Psaki is implicated here. Joe Biden's implicated here. Right now, we have an administration that is reintroducing segregation again in this country under the guise of medical safety. And it has nothing to do with medical safety, of course, because people who've been vaccinated are, by their own logic, safe. They're not going to get infected. They've been vaccinated. 100 million Americans thereabouts have recovered from the virus and have active antibodies. They're not carriers. They're not going to get it themselves. So if you were going by the science, you I mean, none of these laws or regulations would even occur to you. Yeah, that's exactly right. But also don't forget, Tucker, that science is always convenient. The government always uses science like a tool. During the progressive era, it was science that taught you that black Americans were dumber than white Americans. It was scientific. They had proved it scientifically that black Americans were dumber, and therefore they did not want blacks and whites breeding and segregation, therefore, was a must in society. They manipulate society when they want to discriminate a certain group of people. Right now, they are bent on discriminating against Trump supporters, discriminating against conservatives, even with Lies, not even looking at the actual numbers. And you are correct to assess that black people are extremely hesitant about the vaccine for good reason. The government has lied to black people a lot in the past. So they're not trusting the government. They're not right. trusting the science that seems to change every couple of days, depending on what Dr. Fauci is feeling like in the morning. Why does no one say that? I mean, if 27 percent of African-Americans have been vaccinated, which is to say 73 percent haven't. If half of CDC and NIH employees haven't been vaccinated, if you really wanted to vaccinate the whole population, you would make the pitch to them. You wouldn't use this opportunity to attack and demonize your political enemies. This has nothing to do with politics, does it? I mean, the yes. point is to divide. That's exactly right. It has nothing to do with politics and everything to do with politics. From the very beginning, COVID-19 has been used as a political tool by the left to go after their enemies, to radically introduce change in this country, and in my opinion, to create a totalitarian system of full and utter government control under Joe Biden and the Democrats. We have seen this over and over again, trying to change election laws. I mean, there's so many things we can talk about here, but what we're talking about today is dangerous. We are talking about segregation. So people need to get on board and realize we are living in that time right now. You watching this, you have a decision to stand up right now and say, I don't care how I feel about my neighbor. This is wrong. There should not be segregated sections for people at any sporting event or anywhere else in this country. That's right. Show us your blood test. And lots of people have plenty of people I know have been vaccinated. And if you're asked what's your vaccine status, I think the appropriate response is up yours. You know, in principle, yeah. don't answer that question. Why, why would you? Candace Owens, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.